My name is Danny Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello aeromodelers and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to continue on the theme of canopies, although it is a chipmunk can canopy, this isn't the quarter scale chipmunk canopy. I'm very fortunate that I've been selected to fly for the British team in the World Championship, Scale World Championships in Romania in August this year. And as part of that, I'm flying in F4B, which is control line scale. So my model has been checked over and statically judged repeatedly, and although it's won the nationals, the British nationals twice, to get it up to World Championship standard, there are a few things I need to correct. I've already done some work on the model, but what I'm going to look at today is creating another canopy, again, chipmunk canopy. So what I've got here in front of me is the original moulding for the canopy for a Dennis Bryant 1 6 scale chipmunk, and that's what I've based my model on. It's not exactly as the Dennis Bryant, I modified quite a few bits, <laughs> you know what I'm like, but the canopy uh, is for a DHC-1. The chipmunk I'm, I've modelled is a T-22 or a T-10, but civilianized would be a T-22. So in fact, mine's a military version, so it's, so it's a T-10. And the canopy is different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a plaster plug of the DHC-1 canopy, and then I'm going to modify the plug to make it into a T-10 canopy, and then we'll vac form a new canopy from that. Okay, so similar exercise to what we've just been doing, um, but different. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use some uh, a material to make a plug. And in this case, I'm going to use Herculite number two, which I got from East Coast Fiberglass. And it's like a dental plaster of Paris. It's a very fine but hard plaster of Paris. And it's great for this. And it goes off quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I've got to mix 2200, well, the mould takes 2200 millilitres of water to fill it. So 2200 grams is, is the weight. Uh, and the mix ratio is 42% of um, the Herculite to, to water. So I've got to mix four litres or four kilos of powder to the water and then pour it into the plug. Now, I'm, I'm not very good at working out ratios, so um, hopefully I've got it about right. We'll give it a go and see what happens. So I have a bucket of water here with the right amount of fluid in it to go into here. Um, obviously, I'm going to end up with more fluid than I need because the adding of the powder is going to, to make it um, a higher volume. So what I'm going to use to try and beat the um, powder or mix the powder into the water is one of these and it's basically a plunger type um, tool as you push it up and down it spins. So let's get, get started. One of the things I should say is when you're doing this you need to make a platform to support the canopy if you want to make a copy of another canopy that you've already got. So you have to make a frame that supports it all the way around the edge because the weight of the fluid will actually distort the shape. So you need a frame to take the weight of all the water that you're going to pour, all the substance you're going to put in there. So here I've made a frame just out of MDF and, uh, and that should take the weight quite happily. Right, let's get on with mixing the powder into the water. See how we get on. That didn't go quite as planned. I had hoped it would pour out, but it didn't. But it's mixing fairly easily, so let's keep going. That's one kilo of fluid. Or powder, I should say. That's two kilos of fluid, of um, Herculite. And I can already see what's going to happen. We've got 
too much water compared to Herculate. So it's going to take a lot of Herculate to make this actually thick enough. Now another one. See, we've probably got twice as much fluid now that we actually need to fill this mould, but it's not thick enough. Now I don't know whether you can use this stuff um, in a much wetter mix like this. And it just takes longer to set, or what will happen. But uh, I'll keep going to the suggested strength. And that feels more like what I was expecting, which is about the right amount of powder as well. Now the consistency is like slip. If you've ever done any ceramics, you know slip is the, is the viscosity of clay when you're pouring it into moulds. There we go. I think that's good. Now this stuff goes up quite quickly. So let's see how we get on. Now I'm going to pour it in as thin a stream as I can and that's to get rid of the air bubbles. while still actually pouring the stuff. Amazingly, it's only just about the right amount. Right, and there we go. There might just be a little bit more we can squeeze out of it, just to get this end a little bit more full. Right, so while I go and clean the bucket and the swirling stick, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, that's all cleaned up. Now we just have to wait for this to dry. Oh, and it's already <laughs> firm, but not set. But, believe it or not, it's already firm. Um, just feeling if there's any warmth coming out of the material. Nope. 
no warmth yet, but I don't think that's going to take very long to dry at all. Right, we'll let that go hard, and then we'll um, attempt to get it out of the out of the original. Um, I've been led to believe, and I have done it before, and it did work, that uh, it doesn't do any harm at all to the original canopy. Um, the, the stuff doesn't stick to the plastic at all. So um, anyway, more when we uh, when we pull it out of there. Believe it or not, it's only been 10 minutes and it is already pretty solid. In fact, I can only just chip chunks of it away. So it's a very quick way of doing this. And there is a little bit of warmth, not very much, but a little bit of warmth. So if we lift it, we should be able to lift it out and try and get underneath it. Because obviously it's heavy. Oh. where you don't want to drop it and undo all the work but in theory lift it upside down with a bit of a squeeze and a pull and a tug here and there actually been told that there is another way of doing this and that is to quite simply inject air into the edge so I'm wondering whether I should try that There you go. That's how you remove a plug from the uh, from the mould. Very useful little tool. This it's only a couple of quid from eBay, but it's got a rubber nozzle on it, so you can force it right into the edge of the seam of the mould. Okay, and uh, yeah, you just pull the trigger and blast. But you saw what happened. It kind of popped it off and that works really well for glass fiber molding as well it's a really good good way of doing it so here you can see the plug is formed now what I intend to do is to actually sand this top section and get rid of it. it's actually quite a lot of heat coming off of it so what I intend to do is sand off some of this shape here you see the shape at the top this is the only difference between the um, DHC1 and the T10. Uh, what I am noticing is on this side, the side has gone in a little bit. Um, I think I'll be able to straighten it out once I once I, I cast it. Um, you probably can't really see it. This side just goes in a little bit here. So what I'll there's a frame that goes along the bottom edge anyway. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just use that frame to straighten out that, that section there. But you can see it came off even with the bulges in the sides. So the difference between the T10 and the DHC1 is the openings in the top. That's the only difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the top completely smooth. Then I'll vac form it and then I'll vac form again over the top of that to create just the top section. Well it's been another 20 minutes and I couldn't wait any longer. 
what I'm using is a very fine sanding foam pad. And I'm just very gently sanding the top. All I'm trying to do is remove the ridge that is forming the shape of the uh, openings in the top. So on the chipmunk, as you'll, you'll all no doubt know, it has this metal panel with openings for sort of skylights, sunroof. <laughs> and um, the shape of those openings is different between the T10 and the, T, uh, and the DHC1. This canopy is really for a DHC1, which is the very first chipmunk. I could probably use a much coarser grade, but I really don't want to, I, I don't know how this material is going to handle being sanded, so I don't want to leave any, you know, too many marks in it if I can, so I'll sneak up on it. They're disappearing nicely now. And then of the, the new part that I make, the only bit I'll probably use is this top section, just here. If I ever need another canopy, a complete one, then fine. Then I'll just mould on from this. But all I really need is that, just that top section. Um, and then I'll just change the top of my existing canopy to match. So that this will fit over my existing canopy. Should be doable. This is clogging very quickly. It's still very hot. <laughs> so you do get a chemical reaction in the Herculite as it, as it sets. When you see the final canopy, you think, oh, it's not bad. But when you actually see it as a plug, and I was talking earlier about these distortions that you see in the sides, it's actually in the original. So I haven't, uh, this is a true copy of the original. It just shows you how the original is not actually that accurate. And there we have it. That's it. That's um, good enough now to, to back form. It is very useful to be able to make a canopy in this way, or make a plug in this way. Should you ever damage one, you can always make a copy. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please click like and subscribe, and hit the little bell icon to get reminders of future videos. See you soon.